Attorney General William Barr testified before the House Judiciary Committee. And the exchanges were incredibly fiery at times. There were many different topics covered, but I think the most important to discuss considering the moment we're in is how federal agents have been treating peaceful protesters in Portland and now in Seattle. And how the Department of Justice was involved in this decision making. So without further ado, I want to start off with one of the more notable exchanges which happened between Congressman Jerry Nadler and William Barr. Let's take a look. Yes or no, have you discussed the president's reelection campaign with the president or with any White House official or any surrogate of the president? Well, I'm not going to get into my discussions with the president. Well, have you discussed that topic with him, yes or no? Not in, not in relation to this program. I didn't ask that. I asked if you discussed that. With I'm a member of the cabinet and there's an election going so, on. Obviously, the topic so comes the up. So the answer yes. Well, the, the topic yes. comes up in cabinet meetings and other things. Shouldn't, okay. It shouldn't be a surprise that, that the topic of the election. I didn't say I was surprised. I just asked if you'd done that. So as part of those conversations with the president uh, or his people about the reelection campaign, have you ever discussed the current or future deployment of federal law enforcement? In connection with what? In connection with what you just said, in connection with, the, with your discussions with the president or with other people around him of his reelection campaign, have you discussed the current or future deployment of federal law enforcement? Well, as I say, I'm not going to get into my discussions with the president, but I've made it clear that I would like to pick the cities based on law enforcement need and based on neutral criteria. So, but you, you can't tell me whether you discussed... No, I'm not going to discuss what I discussed with the president. Can you commit today that the department will not use federal law enforcement as a prop in the president's reelection campaign. We are not using I just federal want to close. law enforcement. So Benjamin, I wanted to get your thoughts on that line of questioning. We actually have a, a second part of what Nadler was saying here. I actually, you know, despite some of my issues with Nadler in other areas, I, I'm glad that he asked this line of, of questions because I think that it's pretty clear that Donald Trump is in a moment of desperation, realizes that he's falling behind on polling and has been for over a month now, and has tried to latch on to this narrative that he's the so called law and order president and that he's gonna be tough on crime. But really, what he's doing is, in my opinion, dismantling our constitutional rights. Absolutely. I mean, that's precisely what he's doing it and doing, and he's doing it for the benefit of his campaign. But the thing is, though, the, the, the sad irony of this is that this narrative of law and order itself is not sticking, right? You you have the recent data that came out to show that Antifa has not been associated with a single murder in the last 25 years, whereas Donald Trump supporters, right wing extremists, have been associated with every single murder that took place in the year of 2018, the every single extremist murder that took place in 2018. So there's a disconnect, but that doesn't stop him from using his troops like Gestapo to go in and make a scene video after video. So that's exactly what he's doing. Yeah, and it's it's just so fascinating because we've already seen um, a Trump campaign ad fear mongering about how, oh, this is what Biden's America is gonna look like, except mm -hmm. this is what your America looks like. And he's only further escalated tensions and escalated violence in places like Portland by getting federal agents involved. And so I'm glad that you know William Barr and Donald Trump are getting called out for this. I think it's hilarious that William Barr is pretending as though like he's shocked that people would honestly see what's going on here, right? Like his facial expressions in that video cracked me up. But let's go to the second part of this exchange and see what Barr has to say. You really can't hide behind legal fictions this time, Mr. Barr. It's all out in the open, where the people can see what you are doing for themselves. The president wants footage for his campaign ads, and you appear to be serving it up to him as ordered. In most of these cities, the protests had begun to wind down before you marched in and confronted the protesters. And the protesters aren't mobs. They are mothers and veterans and mayors. In this moment, real leadership would entail de-escalation, collaboration, and looking for ways to peaceably resolve our differences. Instead, you use pepper spray and truncheons on American citizens. You did it here in Washington. You did it at Lafayette Square. You expanded to Portland. And now you are projecting fear and violence nationwide in pursuit of obvious political objectives. 
I think it's important to identify uh, who some of these protesters are. And you know, we, we don't talk about strategy enough, um, but I think that uh, these protesters are, are getting a little more savvy about optics, right? And so the wall of moms, I think, is is important. The veterans who have gotten involved, that's incredibly important. You know, Donald Trump fear mongering about them and defaming them is absolutely disgusting. And then you have uh, people who are now increasingly carrying American flags while they're protesting, and the imagery of federal agents. Uh, raining terror on these peaceful protesters as they're holding American flags is really powerful imagery. Yeah, what it what it requires, Anna, is it requires for Republicans and conservatives and Donald Trump supporters to separate um, the images of America, the images of of white suburbia. You know, separating white suburbia away from um, um, what they consider to be real Americans. And that's why this narrative isn't working. Now, I do personally have a problem with the fact that it requires this type of imagery, but we have to be strategic, right? And so the fact that you have middle age, middle income white women who are getting assaulted by the police, and you have older white men, veterans, Navy veterans getting assaulted by the police, I mean, it creates a cognitive dissonance in the minds of conservatives that forces them to just expose their, their hypocrisy and their bigotry. Yeah, you make such a great point, and and you're absolutely right about that. It's it says something about our culture when you have to see this brutality towards specific groups of people for Americans to find it, um, you know, abhorrent, uh, wrong, unconstitutional. Yeah. Uh, that that is definitely uh, a virus in uh, you know our collective thinking. There's no question about it. Um, but the optics certainly do uh, play a role in Donald Trump getting defeated when it comes to the narrative that he's trying to build here. You know, he's actually been pretty good at marketing. But when it comes to coronavirus, when it comes to the way he's dealt with civil unrest, I'm really happy to see uh, that people out on the streets who are who are practicing their First Amendment rights aren't letting him get away with taking charge of the narrative. Yeah. And unfortunately, William Barr uh, took this uh, opportunity to basically make excuses for uh, the tactics used by these federal agents. In fact, you're going to hear a little of that in this next clip. Ever appropriate, Mr. Barr, for officers to use force against peaceful protesters, yes or no? Not against peaceful protesters. So you also don't mention in your statement today or your testimony that federal officers have even tear gassed elected representatives. So let me ask you, sir, do you think it's ever appropriate to use tear gas on peaceful protesters, yes or no? Well, the problem in these things sometimes occur because uh, it's hard to separate people who- Mr. Barr, my question is very specific. Do you think it is ever appropriate to use tear gas on peaceful protesters, it is, yes or no? It is, it is appropriate to use tear gas when it's indicated uh, to disperse- On peaceful protesters? To protest disperse an unlawful assembly and sometimes, sir, unfortunately, Peaceful protesters are affected. It's, I mean, he's just absolutely lying. Uh, we've shown you so many videos uh, of peaceful protesters who are doing absolutely nothing wrong. I mean, when we first learned about uh, the deployment of federal agents, it was because they were showing up in unmarked cars, wearing military fatigues, but with no tag or label indicating that they were from Customs and Border Patrol. Uh, no indication that they were federal agents. They were snatching peaceful protesters up, shoving them into vans and detaining them without any charges, no probable cause. We've shown you videos of veterans getting pepper sprayed in the face. We showed you one yesterday of a veteran getting pepper sprayed in the face who's a Vietnam War veteran. And you have federal agents pepper spraying him in the face. I mean, it's it's so frustrating, Benjamin. Like it's so unbelievably frustrating <laughs> to to sit here and listen to those lies. Luckily, you know, some Democrats did a really good job in, you know, dismantling Barr's nonsense. But it's still infuriating to see what the Trump administration is doing, and honestly, how like fragile our constitutional rights are. You know, that's the thing, right? I was gonna say something totally different, but I, I think people really have to take in consideration how fragile this country is in general. Once we got somebody in the White House who just did not care, he had no shame, he didn't care about protocol or decorum, and he absolutely doesn't care that they are defining peaceful protesters based on their political ideology.
That's where we are right now. So if you are a person out there protesting against Donald Trump, then you are seen as a threat and you are not viewed as a peaceful protester. I don't care how much attorney Barr tries to prevaricate around that. It's clear because when we've seen the opposite coming from right wing protesters, they're treated with love and kind and the white glove treatment. Yeah, I mean, when it came to the um, coronavirus protests. Uh, mm. These were right wingers who were uh, furious about social distancing and about businesses shutting down. And you know, I had a little bit of empathy for them because I can totally understand that if Congress is not meeting your needs financially during this pandemic and your businesses are shut down, I mean, yeah, people are going to get angry. Um, but you had some of these protesters showing up to Capitol buildings completely armed. And the treatment by Republican lawmakers was, well, Second Amendment, Second Amendment. At the same time, I mean, we did the story about a young man who was shot and killed by a driver who was intentionally trying to drive into a crowd of protesters. And the cops were making excuses for it because he was open carrying an AK-47 type rifle. And so I bring that up because which, which one is it? Are Second Amendment rights protected only in in instances that benefit the right wing, or are they protected for all? I saw a quote from um, I don't know who it was. The original quote is attributed to, but Chris Hayes put it on uh, Twitter today, and he said that uh, in this kind of instance, it's anything and everything for our friends and rule laws and order for our enemies. And that's really what we're facing. They give an extended amount of grace to anyone who's on their side politically. And if you so much as spray graffiti, I mean, remember that's that's the images that they were tweeting out. The Department of Homeland Security Acting Secretary Chad Wolf, he tweeted out images of graffiti as a justification as to why they're bringing down the federal troops. Whereas when they threaten the lives of, of the governor of Michigan, right? Threatening to take her out of power, nothing. They just stood there and smiled. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.